As far as the technique of rotator cuff tear is concerned, there are generations and we will be focusing and we will be demonstrating the different variations of the anchors and the generations accordingly. Now, uh, rotator cuff has evolved over time and initially it was a single row repair. So if you have to do a single row repair technique, then what you need to do is you need to put your anchor in the midline of your footprint. So if this is the rotator cuff, you put your anchor almost in the midline of the, you have to put your anchor in the midline of your rotator cuff. So that means that you need to put your anchor between the cartilaginous level and in between the lateral. So approximately the width of the tendon is approximately uh, 2 centimeters. So you need to put your anchor at about uh, 0.5 to 1 centimeter lateral to the cartilaginous end of the shoulder. Once you have done that, you use your shoulder scorpion device. So this is the shoulder scorpion needle and this is basically disposable and you use it along with a shoulder scorpion device. So this you can see is a black needle. This is as compared to the red needle. The red needle is for the knee scorpion. The black needle is for the shoulder scorpion. We'll just open it up and we put it into the knee scorpion, uh, into the shoulder scorpion and it fits like this. And when you grab it, it will come like this. Okay. Cut. So when you have to do a single row repair, you will do it with a Mason Allen technique. What that means is you need to pass two sutures like a mattress and one suture like a simple or one suture like a mattress. So what we'll do is we'll pass the first bite like this. Okay. This you can use either as a simple suture and then you can use one suture as a mattress. So this is the is more deeper bite. The single suture is a more deeper bite. Whereas the mattress suture is a more shallow bite. So what I am doing here is okay. So what we have done is we have used one suture as a simple suture and one suture as a mattress suture. So this is called as a Mason and you can use this one suture which is a, this is a three, triple loaded anchor. So this you can use as a simple, simple loaded. And what is actually meant by a Mason and suture is you tie a mattress suture like this. Uh, here we are tying a basically SMC knot that is a Seoul Medical Center uh, sliding knot and we put it like this. Okay. And we use our knot pusher. So this is our post. This, this side is acting as a post. And we close it like this. So we put it here. And we lock it here. Okay. Okay. So this is a mattress suture. Once we are done with that. Not, not cut it please. Or you can do. So this one is your mattress suture. And then. You can put, you can do your simple suture. So this is the simple suture and this is basically again as SMC knot. This works like this. Okay, so this is again an SMC knot. Okay, it closes like this. Okay, so this simple knot and the mattress knot are basically crisscross each other. So the first knot, the simple suture is over the mattress suture and what it does is it prevents the cutting through or the cheese cutting effect of the simple suture. The mattress suture downstairs will prevent the cheese cutting effect or the cut through effect of the simple suture. So this is basically, basically called as a Mason Allen construct where one suture is acting as a mattress suture and the other suture is acting as a simple suture. The simple suture is over the mattress suture and this suture here will prevent the cheese cutting effect 
of the simple suture. So this is the first generation of the rotator cuff repair technique. So this is basically you do it, you can do it for small tears and in also massive tears also you can do this sort of a technique to repair the rotator cuff. So this is basically the, um, uh, the construct that we use for the first generation rotator cuff tear. Now coming to the second generation, second generation you can use a, basically it is a knotted technique but it is double row. So what you need to do is you need to put two rows of anchor. So here what are we doing is we are, uh, we are putting the first row of the anchor, uh, first row anchor here like this, okay, okay and then what we are doing is Okay, so this is the medial row and you can make the lateral row with a simple suture only. Here you pass the suture four times and for the lateral suture you pass it two times. So the medial suture is a mattress suture and the lateral suture is a simple suture. So thereby you can do a double row repair without using a knotless technique. This is less usually used. Now we are coming to the third variation. The third variation is basically the uh, knotted double row technique. Here we are using an anchor on the medial aspect. Okay. And what we do is we pass the sutures in a mattress fashion. So that means that we will pass both the sutures here. in a mattress fashion. If it is a double loaded anchor, you can use it. So this, if this is a double loaded anchor, you can use that as well. You can put two anchors also and you have to tie these sutures back into its place. So what you can do is you can just tie them as you do any other regular suture. Okay. And thereby you tie these sutures back into its position. Okay, so the medial row is basically a knotted anchor. So this is basically a knotted repair on the medial aspect. Like this. And once you are done with your medial repairs, you will put your swive lock anchor on the lateral aspect. So what you can do is like you will have multiple suture limbs like from here you will have two suture limbs extra and those suture limbs can be in, uh, incorporated into the swive lock and this can be inserted as a lateral row anchor here. So I'll just demonstrate you how you how you do that. So what you need to do is you need to just pass this sutures here like this. You can pass two of them. Or because you can just use, you can use one, one of them. And then you put it into the knot. You ask your assistant to pull it like this. Can you hold it for me? And you, you, you need to tension it. So this is your swive lock. This is your tensioning. So this is your lateral row anchor. Relax. This is your lateral row anchor. You need to tension it like this. You need to tension it like this. And then we need to rotate it and tie it over the swive lock in full tension. Ask your assistant to hold both of them like this. And then you slowly insert the swive lock into its place. So this is how a third generation rotator cuff repair is done. So then we remove it. And you can see that the inner medial row is a knotted anchor and the outer thing is a knotless anchor. Then you will have two sutures which are coming out from here and these sutures you can actually use them for a dog ear reduction. So the sutures which are coming out from the swive lock you can use it for a dog ear reduction technique. These are the sutures which are coming out from the swive lock. You take this out and these are the sutures which are coming out from the swive lock and these sutures can be used 
to do a dog ear injection. Supposedly you see a dog ear here, you can just take the suture through here and use this particular suture in a particular manner to reduce and repair the dog ear. So the swivel lock anchor will give you an option of doing a dog ear reduction with the, full, with the free stitch that is provided along with the swivel lock. Now this particular option is not available in other anchors. So other companies lateral row anchor you may not get a central suture which is used for a dog ear reduction. So this is an important benefit that we get that apart from doing a knotless repair on the lateral row, we are also getting one suture which we can use for the dog ear reduction and this is basically called as a dog ear reduction suture. So this is basically the third generation of the rotator cuff repair in which the medial suture anchors are put, the knots are tied and then it is incorporated into the lateral row. A special suture limb, extra suture limb of the soil lock can be used to repair the dog ears if any coming out of the double row construct. Now the fourth generation of the repair is what we call is as a suture bridge technique. Now suture bridge technique is a unique technique in which what we can do is we can use a knotless technique without tying a knot. So if you want to do a suture bridge, what you want to do is you want to put your medial row anchor like this. Now there is a suture bridge kit which is available in Arthrex. Otherwise what you can do is you can put your anchor like this. Okay. And then you can just take out the suture limbs. And then uh, the original speed bridge actually has got swive lock on both the sides and you have tapes to do that. But what you can do if you don't have a, a, a speed bridge is basically you the middle row anchor is used the to pass the sutures one by one. So this is the first. This is the second. And this is the fourth. Now this is what is called as a parachute technique. Here, uh, this can this is ideally to be done with tapes. So you have anchors with tapes, and in the speed bridge kit, you will get tapes along with that. So what we need to do now is we need to pass all these four suture limbs through your you will stop. So in the fourth generation technique which is also a speed bridge technique you don't need to tie the knots on the medial aspect. What you need to do is you need to just pass the sutures from the medial suture, uh, suture anchors and these sutures are incorporated into the Swipe lock. Normally, you can put up to five, four uh, suture limbs or two tapes into the swipe lock very easily, and this way you don't have any knot coming up here. And you need to, you can repair the. You ask your assistant to give a manual traction and to the sutures, and these sutures can be tied one by one onto the swive lock anchor in appropriate tension like this. Please remember that we have not tied any knots so far and we are just relying on the tension of the middle row anchors for a good repair here. So what we have done here is we have pulled the middle row anchors through the eyelet, tensioned it up put it in like this, we have hold it into its position and then we will be just inserting our, keeping the sutures in tension, we will be just inserting the swive lock anchor in. Again, we will be just leaving it, we will just release the tension now. And now you can appreciate that we are able to repair the cuff without putting any knots on the medial aspect and this is 
फोर्थ जनरेशन ऑफ द रोटेटर का प्रिपेयर नॉ आर्टेक्स एज ब्यूटिफुल डिजाइन स्पीड ब्रिज किट फॉर दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ अ रिपेयर The kit consists of two medial rose swivel lock which are loaded with tapes and two lateral low ro rose swivel locks which are without tapes. And the beautiful part about the speed bridge kit is the tapes are interlinked. So you need to pass only one passage of the tape. So the both the tapes are linked in the end. So you just have to pass one tape from each of the aspects. The extra limb of the swivel lock you can use it is it as an extra suture to tie it medially. and then these tapes are once they are passed they are cut side to side and you can use two medial and two lateral uh, anchors two swivel locks on the middle aspect two swivel lock on the lateral aspect and thereby you can repair it and this is basically the fourth generation of rotator cuff repair the advantage of this particular technique is you don't have to use a knot on the medial aspect and thereby the devascularization of the tissue is less as compared to a knotted technique so basically this is the fourth four generation of the rotator cuff repair that you can perform uh, usually the both all of them have their their indications of their own for a small tear you can do a single row technique which we have described here this is a single row technique if you are doing a single row you need to use a mason allen technique double row uh, as i told you uh, second generation is not very popular but you can use one medial and one lateral suture anchor repair it uh, the medial row is a mattress the lateral row is simple the third generation is basically you tie the medial medial uh, anchors knots and then use a swivel lock anchor on the lateral aspect the fourth generation you don't tie the knot on the medial aspect you just use the sutures on the swivel lock on the lateral side and this will give a sort of a parachute technique to reduce it and a more advanced version of fourth generation of rotator cuff repair is basically the speed bridge technique which is developed by arthrex thank you